How's it going folks? Thought I'd do a bit of a backyard farm update, just looking at different bits and pieces that we had planned and also a quick catch up with the aquaponics and then I'll give you a personal update for you folks who have been following us for a while and are curious as to what's going on around the place uh, personally with Bianca and myself. So to begin with, we'll start with the mango tree. She has a number of fruit on her at the moment. Hope that's not glaring out too much for you folks and we are trying a few different methods to um, control the Queensland fruit fly on them uh, if you guys saw last week's video it was an aquaponics pest control all those measures by the way are um, usable in um, normal soil, soil growing as well this is a little bottle trap um, from yard and farm horticulture and it's done okay it's caught a couple of um, fruit fly in there another one down here hasn't done so well uh, we've only got four or five in there, I think, last count. It's basically a pheromone attractant. Um, from memory, it's made up of different essential oils. Um, so there's no real toxins in there, it just attracts them and they end up drowning. And we have another one up in here. I'll give you a quick look at that before we look at the gingers and whatnot. And this one is a ball one. I've had a couple of people say that there's um, probably bees on there, native bees. The native bee hive is just down there, less than four meters away and I haven't seen a native bee on here yet. So I just have to get this to focus properly on the ball. Um, but up the top there we have what looks like a horsefly. Around here we have what looks like a wasp. That could be a beneficial one. Uh, no bees of, um, that I can tell on there. A lot of uh, the fruit flies, small um, natty looking things, those little black dots. But that's pretty much all it. Uh, there was a concern raised by a few people that what we might have are native bees on there. Um, but yeah, no, I can guarantee you these are the little round and creamy looking Queensland fruit fly, the majority of them on there. Yeah, it looks to be doing its job. Uh, down here right next to it, we have an ahi amarillo um, chili and we have loads of fruit on this one and I haven't seen any stung by fruit fly yet. But strangely enough, uh, last season this was covered with fruit as well right underneath the mango tree and we had no fruit fly strike that I can remember on any of these fruit and while the plant in the aquaponics was getting absolutely caned so whether it's um, because it's sort of semi-hidden by the large gallandrel over the back there that's flowering very pretty plant and uh, the other bits and pieces around here camouflage it from the fruit flies I don't know uh, there's some people who will say that you know plants grown in soil or have better defenses than aquaponics because there's more nutrients. Um, I haven't fed these pouches up in over 12 months and this is all regrowth from last season. Um, so yeah, there would be some nutrient deficiency um, in this plant. Try and get you a little bit of a look in the light, but this, these leaves do not look as dark green uh, or as healthy as the ones in the aquaponics. But yeah, for whatever reason, um, the fruit on here, uh, crossed fingers, is um, not being stung by the um, uh, the fruit fly. Oh, I've also got some of these upstairs that I harvested from the aquaponics I'm turning into a green chilli sauce. So if I finish it by the time I edit this video I'll pop a picture at the end. Uh, other bits and pieces down the back we have the veggie pod. It may look like it's filled with weeds. Uh, this is a common one here in Australia called Stinking Roger. No it's oh, also known as Fool's Pot. It is not marijuana cannabis, hemp, whatever. It's um, black mint, um, southern cone marigold. It's actually used in some Peruvian dishes to make up a, a sauce. We like the, the nice tender tips chopped up and popped on top of potato salad. Very nice. Here we just have our red amaranth. I uh, don't think it's flowering at the moment, no. Um, but that pops up um, just as a random volunteer everywhere. You can eat the um, leaves on that one. Over the back here we have a Chinese red amaranth, but it's not in the sun. So it doesn't really have that full on red leaves. And down here we have a load of purslane. Now all this stuff is edible and we have used it all in many dishes over the years and it's all grown out of a veggie pod that had last season's garlic grown in it. Uh, just all volunteer plants that have just popped up. Oh, there are one or two weeds in here as well that we should probably put pick out. Uh, this purslane is starting to get um, little seed pods on it and I've learnt my lesson. You don't use that for um, curries when they have little seed pods. You end up with little crunchy bits all through the dish. Uh, so yeah, just a bit of a look at that, you know. Uh, may look very weedy, but it's all edible. Uh, the uh, black turmeric is going really well. And there's a little flower down in there that you can see. I was going to break this up and offer some rhizome very cheaply this year, but I just didn't get around to it. Sorry, folks. Um, 
dragon fruit from Stephen. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, this is something that will end up going onto a, um, a post, a proper post um, section down in the back corner there at some point in time, or it might even come over this side. I'm not too sure on the actual fruit layout of things as of yet. Uh, the bees are doing really, really well. There is loads of activity in the hive, but we still do need to um, swap over that top box. It's got a little bit of rot up the top. Uh, just the normal madras turmeric. Uh, the gingers down the back here are just flying out of the gate. Um, as you guys may know, uh, we overwinter all our ginger here. We're in the subtropics. Uh, all the ginger down the back, that is, and some on the deck if you saw the ginger growing in pouches video. Um, so, yeah, you know, it. it what, what can I say? We just need to come out the back, harvest ginger when we need it, and it's pretty much well on hand. We don't have to deliberately grow it every season. And we've even got some stuff like the uh, finger root down there. We've got some aloe under there. We've got some nasturtiums growing underneath, and I do have some more ginger rhizomes just tucked under this mulch. Hopefully they'll just, um, yeah, fill out under the uh, mango tree nicely. And over the back there we have a sunshine chili, but we won't look at that. A uh, quick look at one of the papayas. We ended up with the rot in the top over the cooler months, but we've got little branches coming off down the sides. I'm going to see if I can um, try and save this plant by um, chopping a section off and putting some sort of a cover over the top of it. And the other trees here are starting to put out some more fruit. We lost a few to the bats, oh, fruit bats, flying foxes a while back. Uh, but yeah, it's starting to grow back. Uh, now we'll pop up to the aquaponics. Oh, just before we go up, I thought I'd show you this. Uh, this is how hungry the possums are at the moment. They're eating green mangoes. So yeah, um, they're after a little bit of food. Uh, the blueberries are all pretty much all finished. We did get a strange second flush on some of these blueberry bursts. Uh, they're just coming through. So we're just picking whatever comes through and nibbling on it at the time. And down there, this is the asparagus that will be going out the front to create a border between us and the neighbors at the end of the new terraced area. That's something I'll be starting very soon. And again, we've got some spectacular red amaranth over there. Uh, Bianca just wants me to seed that whole back area until we get um, the work finished down there, just to grow some more beautiful um, tall flowers like that. And we've got a load of other stuff going on here. Some more red amaranth, the kaffir lime's doing well, um, the cardamom and ginger over the back. We've got some pigeon pea just randomly popping up. I love my pigeon pea. Um, borage, um, perennial um, basil, we've got some more black turmeric, beautiful seaside daisy flowers and some um, Okinawan spinach over there. Uh, really this section of the garden isn't exactly productive in that we're taking a lot of food out of it at the moment but you know everything is growing pretty much well unattended and all the flowers on the asparagus flowers and these flowers down here the borage and the seaside daisy they're all providing a little bit of fodder for the beneficial insects around oh, we'll mosey on up to the aquaponics so we'll start off looking at the um, ph i don't know if you can see that there in the glare we're sitting at around about 6.7 6.8 uh, that's because i've added a load of potassium bicarbonate into the system because we're continually getting a lot of rain. I actually topped this up yesterday, and wouldn't you know it, yesterday afternoon, we ended up with a massive downpour, one of the heaviest ones we've had this summer, and the system was actually overflowing in the afternoon. So I added some more potassium bicarbonate in there, and that's buffered the alkalinity and uh, brought the pH up. So pretty chuffed about um, that. Just sitting a little bit higher than it was. Um, I did get a question too from Hucho about um, extra rain and nutrients in the system. But I've had a load of other really good questions recently, so I'll do a Q&A video for next weekend um, on aquaponics. So if you do have any um, questions about aquaponics, please leave them in the comments down below and we'll get to them next weekend. Uh, for now though, we might toss a bit of feed in for these guys that you can't see. I'll just clean the camera lens, hey? Also had to go in and get a little bit more feed, I'd run out. Um, so we'll give them around about half of one of these cups. I'm not too sure on the weight of that, uh, but they're pretty much all getting almost a whole cup uh, every day. We'll see if any of them want to come up and say good day. Uh, my guess is they will. Oh, Jesus, that tastes nice. So yes, they definitely want a bit of a feed. Um, I'm just slightly wet at the moment, <laughs> um, but the fish are doing really well, putting on a lot of size. Um, as you can see, they are, you know, getting up there. They'd be well and truly, oh, I'd say, at least half that are over the 500 gram mark. And the rest will be getting there very, very soon. We will start harvesting these guys probably just after January. And um, try and get these guys down into a new area, a new system area down there. 
as we're getting the house painted and we'd prefer not to have the grow beds and everything um, you know be able to collect dust as it's sanded off the house even though we've been assured there will be very minimal um, dust coming off but yeah these guys um, I'm pretty happy with the way they're going um, no health issues no bullying issues and um, yeah the, uh, the biggest problem is they're pooing so much at the moment um, we're having to clean out the radial flow filter probably about twice a week but you know that's no huge drama it's all going over here into the mineralization tank that is bubbling away I can't see that in the um, screen there but hopefully it is and I'm adding that back that um, clear water after I turn the bubbler off um, uh, to cant it out and I'm putting it back into the um, system and system wise I have noticed that um, we don't appear to be having many deficiency issues at the moment I pretty much will have just put that down to the increase of feed rate also to the uh, mineralized water going back into the system is helping it to a point I would think uh, about the biggest issue we have at the moment is trying to keep the um, the dipole on the brassicas here um, just so um, we can keep the cabbage butterflies off uh, this one here these are a mini cabbage and I actually think he's ready to pick this week so I might come off in the next day or two the um, ginger in the system is picking up nicely oh this dead plant here by the way is a um, lettuce that I let go to seed and really should have picked the seed pods off before the storm yesterday because they've all been knocked off so I'll clean that up a bit later uh, the other ginger in the little wicking pouch here pouch sorry um, I think when I was digging around the other day I saw a little sprout whoops sorry camera uh, just under the surface over there so hopefully we'll start to see some greenery from that soon and the sweet potato in this pouch is um, starting to kick off nicely and yeah the nasturtium's going quite well it's um, actually growing into a bit of a jungle underneath the bed here but again you know I'm not too concerned the peppery flowers are nice for a bit of a nibble on and um, yeah they do help with the beneficials the sweet potato I haven't trimmed back um, someone actually suggested that I put some of those runners in a pouch underneath the um, bed there to see how it goes and yeah I am going to do that I'll just pop around and show you something there is so much vine coming down here with different runners I think I really need to cut it back before I put any one leader or length into a pouch um, mainly because a lot of the energy may go elsewhere just to give you some idea um, that's what I've got to deal with growing underneath the bed um, this thing just absolutely loves aquaponics loads of greens but as I've mentioned in other videos I don't really ever see any tubers set in the beds themselves um, just looking down here you should at least see one tuber and I'm seeing nothing it's just a mat of, um, of roots so yeah um, I definitely think after a previous experience we're better off um, trying to get something down into a pouch or a um, container filled with some soil so that will be happening um, yeah but all in all really happy with the way things are going so now a little bit of an update for you folks who have been following us for a number of years um, you might remember recently I said I wasn't going to be posting a lot uh, having a bit of a break um, yeah I've gotten in trouble from a few of you regulars uh, sorry folks uh, for uh, continually putting out videos every weekend I've been told I should be having a break and not doing anything um, some of the videos are just reworks of old videos where I've included some new information like the um, organic uh, pest control for the aquaponics uh, that one that I released last week um, others are just bits and pieces I've knocked together quickly uh, basically I still need to put a video out every week uh, to um, appease the algorithm gods otherwise YouTube just won't recommend my videos to people it's just the way it works folks I'm not a big channel I know it looks like I've got loads of subscribers and all that uh, but in the schemes of things I'm a fairly small channel and I don't my my content doesn't have basically the ability to um, keep the views coming um, day after day hopefully that plane's not going to be too loud um, so yeah I still do have to um, publish something to YouTube every week um, as for the reason why well I did mention that Bianca has been a little bit crook I uh, had a few issues flare up uh, she is doing a lot better um, for a while there she was we were just taking things day by day uh, she had some time off work um, three or four days I wanted her to take longer but yeah she wouldn't um, so things have progressed to where we're pretty much all taking it week by week now um, she has her off days she, she's got a physical condition um, we've each got our own problems we're not you know crying poor me or anything like that uh, she's looking after herself she's having physiotherapy regularly and um, changed the diet and all that sort of thing um, which wasn't that bad to begin with to be totally honest content wise for the channel um, I am going to continue just post little updates like this and maybe some rework content 
um, for a little while, uh, just till I can get back into the groove of things, sort out the aquaponics area, um, so we can build that new system and then I'll have a complete aquaponics build video come up onto YouTube, actually probably two. Um, a lot of the material will be used twice, just to show the two different ways you can build a system. Um, a single loop and also a, um, a split flow system. And I'll actually be making a guide out of that, a fully detailed guide that will be available over on my retrieve page later on down the track. Uh, speaking of which, thank you very much to everyone who has um, chipped in and bought a copy of our online interactive guide. Uh, I won't get on, go on about it here. A link will pop up there and there'll be one in the description. You can go suss that out. Um, online fully interactive guide. I really do appreciate the support folks. Um, had a lot of interaction with the folks over there asking questions and whatnot. And it's good to see people um, having a crack at aquaponics. But just to let you know, there will be a video coming out showing you how you can turn the aquaponics guide into a Chrissy gift if you want to give it uh, uh, for Christmas to an aqua curious loved one or friend. Yeah, I'm selling nutcrackers still and um, also the uni seals. The nutcrackers, by the way, there will be a link down in the description to them over at our shops. Um, over at our shop, I should say. Uh, basically, I'm helping a mate out who doesn't want to have to sell online. He just wants to make the nutcrackers. They're pretty much all the best nutcracker I've ever used. Um, and yeah, um, suss it out if you're interested in that for a gift for someone for Christmas. And the uni seals and whatnot, I'm selling them as well. Uh, more as a service to aquaponicist because some people like to really hit you uh, where it hurts in the wallet. Uh, when it comes to um, buying those things from them. Um, so I like to try and offer them as cheap as I can. Time's getting a bit long. Sorry, folks, I'll try and wind it up. Um, but yeah, all the, all the revenue I'm getting from um, YouTube um, and, you know, the Nutcrackers and Uni Seals and the guide and all that sort of stuff, we're setting aside to help me with um, projects to build, um, you know, bits and pieces for the YouTube channel and also to uh, buying a property. Bianca and I have decided that we're going to sell up here and buy a property, property finally within the next two years. And we're going to basically develop it into a bit of a homestead. Um, not so much a self-sufficient one. I don't believe in self-sufficiency. Um, basically, I believe we all should um, get a bit of a skill and then share it within our own small little community, teach other people or maybe do the work and they can, you know, come and give you a hand with a, a skill that they have. Maybe you can give them some gardening help and they can come and make you a new um, kitchen bench, you know, that sort of thing. Um, that's, that's what I'm trying to, um, um, focus on um, the whole self-sufficiency thing you know man is not an island and all that we really do need a community around us um, so that's what we'll be focusing on um, once we get a property and creating content um, through our journey of getting pigs and goats and that sort of thing so um, oh and of course more aquaponics many different ways to do aquaponics because I'll have more space um, so that's a bit of a bonus as well but anyway, I will pretty much will leave it there. I've rubbed it on enough. Um, most of you guys have probably clicked off by now. It'll be interesting to see the uh, um, the analytics after this one gets posted for a week or so. Uh, but yeah, I will leave it there. Uh, before I go though, as always, thank you very much for coming along and sussing out the videos to all you folks who do follow us uh, on a week by week basis. Uh, thank you again to you folks who support us through the YouTube membership platform and those folks who um, support us on our Patreon-like um, supporters page, Farm Your Own Yard. There'll be a link to, those, oh, to that one down below in the description. And also to you folks who are buying the guides, really do appreciate that. But I will pretty much well leave it there, chase down that cabbage butterfly, and I'll let you folks go. I do hope you're all well and happy and your gardens are booming, and I'll catch you next video. Happy growing!